Casper wondered why some players seem to effortlessly dish out massive damage with their five-star characters, while ours don't do that much. In this video, we'll uncover the hidden secrets behind powerful teams in Genshin Impact. We'll discuss character roles, development, synergy, and composition. Let's get into it. Think about this, we can only have four characters in team, and characters classification can also be divided into four. DPS, support, sub DPS, and healer shielder. It's not coincidence. Team building is crucial. Think of your team as a well oiled machine where each character plays a specific role. DPS characters are your damage dealers, the frontline fighters who dish out the big hits. Supports are the behind the scenes heroes, providing buffs, resistance, shred, and crowd control. Sub DPS characters offer additional damage output, often from off field positions. Healers and shield, while well, they protect you and keep your team's health topped up, ensuring you can keep fighting through the toughest battles. Well, having four characters in the team isn't the only thing, so how can we increase any character's damage output? Which brings us to leveling up talents, constellations, and artifacts to maximize a character's potential. Leveling up is simple, they become stronger and more durable. Their health, attack, defense, and one special stat. All these increases making them more effective in combat. Talents are unique abilities that each character possesses. Upgrading your character's talents can significantly enhance their performance. Some talents deal more damage, while others provide utility or crowd control. Constellations are special bonuses you unlock as you acquire multiple copies of a character. They can offer powerful buffs, new abilities, or even completely change a character's playstyle, while other times constellations don't serve significant improvements. Artifacts are the equipment that provides powerful stat bonuses and set effects. They can greatly enhance a character's specific abilities or roles. There are different types of artifacts, each with their own unique stats and set effects. By investing time and resources into these areas, you can transform your characters into formidable forces on the battlefield. Well, anyone who feels like they are dealing less damage is already running four characters team. So having four characters doesn't cut it. Now, this is the part where magic happens. The secret is combining characters whose abilities complement each other. Synergy is the secret source to a winning team, creating a harmonious blend of power and efficiency. So for dishing out huge damage, elemental reactions are powerful interactions between different elements that can deal massive damage or provide unique effects. There are seven elementals in Genshin currently. Anemo, Geo, Electro, Dendro, Hydro, Pyro, Cryo, Pence, seven Archons. When a Hydro character attacks an enemy affected by Pyro or vice versa, a vaporized reaction occurs. This reaction deals increased Hydro or Pyro damage depending on which element was applied first. If Pyro causes Vaporize, the damage bonus will be 1.5 times multiplied, and if Hydro causes the Vaporization, the damage bonus will be 2 times multiplied. Combining Hydro and Cryo elements creates a freeze reaction. Enemies affected by freeze are frozen solid. Enemies will be immovable, but the boss enemies doesn't freeze except few. Shatter happens when blunt attack hits freeze enemies, shattering the freezing effect dealing AoE cryo damage and knocking back enemies. Combination of electro and pyro elements results in an overloaded reaction. Explosion that deals AoE damage knocking back enemies. Animal causes swirl reaction with any element, which deals AoE damage of that element, which spreads the element to nearby enemies. However, Animo doesn't react with Geo and Dendro. Combining cryo and electro elements results in a superconduct reaction. This reduces the enemy's physical resistance down to 40% and deals minor electro damage. Combining Geo and another element results in a crystallized reaction. This creates a shield that absorbs damage of that element and provides a different elemental bonus depending on the element used. Doesn't react with Dendro. Quicken status applies to enemies get affected Electro and Dendro elements. Quicken status does increase damage of either Dendro or Electro depending on which applied first resulting in aggravate and spread reactions. Combining Dendro and Hydro elements on an enemy results in creation of Dendro cores. When the Dendro core is triggered by Electro, it releases a Dendro-infused projectile that deals AoE Dendro damage. Dendro core is triggered by Pyro, it explodes and deal AoE damage resulting in virgin reaction. It also does 5% of the damage to the character means it's self-damage reaction. If done nothing to Dendro cores, they explode after specific time dealing Dendro damage, which is also self-damage explosion. OMG, there are lots of reactions. But need not to be worried, there is this image which explains it well. Link in description. The Elemental Mastery stat further increases the damage of the elemental reactions. You can check the percentage of damage bonus here in this section by pressing this I button. Depending on the Elemental Mastery, it will show calculations. If you put two or more characters of same elements in one team, which will grant you elemental resonance, which you can check in party setup page, right on top right side. Here, these effects can provide various buffs and bonuses, such as increased elemental mastery or attack bonus. The effectiveness of elemental reactions can be significantly enhanced through careful character selection and team composition. Now, let's combine this information and build our teams, shall we?
Let's break down compositions. You might have noticed that there is series of elemental skills and burst is being performed, which is called the rotation, not an official name, but in general terms. Performing specific rotation based on team saves time. Like some skills duration tend to end earlier means those skills need to be performed last or prior to last. In this team of Ayaka, Kazuha, Shenhan, Mona, we first used Ayaka to induce enemies with Cryo, so next Kazuha can swirl Cryo to reduce enemies' Cryo resistance and Kazuha provide an elemental damage bonus based on his elemental mastery. On top of that, doing excellent crowd control. Crowd control is speaking term meaning gathering enemies together. Wherever there is situation of spread out enemies, grouping them together helps to utilize AoE of characters' damage to clear out them fast. Then, Shenhe single tap E elemental skill and Q elemental burst for cryo res shred to the enemies and attack bonus for our Ayaka. Mona burst and elemental skill serves two purpose. One to apply Hydra and other to increase Ayaka's damage output with her omen buff. The reason Mona is second last because her buff duration is short. And finally Ayaka, it's time for her to shine. As all the previous EZs in QS were so she can perform huge damage output. She is our DPS on field going to be on field for longer duration. Crafting a powerful team is an art form. By understanding character roles, investing in their development, and harnessing the power of synergy and elemental reactions, you can elevate your gameplay and become a formidable force in Taivat. With careful planning and execution, you can build a team that dominates the battlefield and leaves your opponents in awe. So, what are you waiting for? Start experimenting with different team compositions and discover your own winning formula. Remember, the best team is the one that brings you the most joy and satisfaction. So go out there, experiment, and have fun. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more Genshin Impact content.